Hello, welcome to Breakfast All Day. Uh, Matt here, Alonzo there, Christy over there. Uh, the Secret Garden, uh, they watched it. I didn't. Um, I didn't think I was going to see it, and then I didn't see it. Uh, so the secret worked on me. You uh, saw the they'll secret, talk about it. but not the Secret <laughs> yes. Garden. You chose yes. wrong. I was going to say, of the two. Uh, well, just because you guys think that. <laughs> This is a new adaptation of the novel by Francis Hodgson Burnett, uh, directed by Mark Munden, who is a uh, mostly British stage and TV actor, uh, sorry, TV director, rather. Uh, it stars a young actress named, uh, I'm going to get this pronunciation wrong, Dixie Edgerix. Uh, as Mary, she plays a young girl who's uh, orphaned in colonial India, sent back to England in 1947 to live at the gloomy estate uh, owned by her uh, widowed uncle, who's played by Colin Firth. He is still consumed by the tragedy of his wife's death, and as such has let the estate kind of go to hell and has not been very close to his uh, young son, um, who is bedridden, and is he sick or not? We'll find out. Um, of course, Mary discovers the secret garden. She uh, uh, becomes friends with Dickon, the uh, kid who works on the estate. And uh, together, they manage to improve the lives of Colin, who is the ailing young boy, and the uh, grief-stricken uncle. Uh, Julie Walters plays the uh, harsh uh, house mistress, uh, Mrs. Medlock. And I'm a huge, huge fan of the 1993 Agnieszka Holland adaptation. Like, that was my favorite film of that year, and that was the Aww. year of Schindler's List and the Piano. Um, and so I was a little dubious going into this one. I love this movie. It is incredibly moving and beautifully done. It's produced by David Heyman, who did the Paddington movies and a lot of the Harry Potters, maybe all the Harry Potters. All the Harry Potters. Um, Harry's Potter. Yes, and uh, it is, this is exquisitely put together. I think the uh, screenplay, uh, which is by Jack Thorne, uh, it really kind of finds a lot more psychological depth to these characters. Even if you like the 93 one, I think you're going to see some angles on this material that you haven't seen before. It's gorgeously put together. I cried a lot. I really oh. enjoyed it, so I dug it. Can you say what made you cry without giving away spoilers to folks yeah, who perhaps I don't know The Secret Garden? I will say this. I think that the movie explores the idea that children whose parents die very often feel guilty about it in one way or another, whether they feel directly responsible or whether they just feel like, um, you know, you get older than you were when the, when the death happened. And you think, oh, God, I wasn't as in tune with what that parent needed. I wasn't as present. I wasn't as loving as I could have been. There's that whole great scene in uh, Terms of Endearment where Deborah Winger tells her son, look, you're going to look back on this years later and think that you could have been nicer to me. And I want you to know now that I know you love me. So like, oh. don't beat yourself up about this. And I think this movie delves into that stuff about these kids who have both lost their parents at an early age and who feel either responsible or they, they feel like that they weren't you know, loving enough to their to their mothers, and the movie is telling you, no, no, no. The mothers knew that you love them. It's okay. Um, and I know not everybody has that relationship with their parents, but if you do, you know, it's a nice reminder that you know whether whether you weren't there to 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 provide everything you think you could have your parents understand what age you were and who you were at that time. And so I found that just really beautiful. Yeah, and it's also visually just extremely beautiful. Um, yeah. It was shot by Lal Crawley, who also shot some very different movies in 45 Years and Vox Lux. Wow. Those are, that's called range, baby. Yeah. And, um, it's, and so it's, you know, got the, the mystical, magical qualities that you would expect in this story, but I think it, it leavens it very well with the realism. Like, tonally, it finds the groove of balancing, you know, the truth of what's happening, but also the childhood fantasy of the escape of, of enduring the truth and without ever sugarcoating sure. what it is all these children have gone there's through. Some, there's some scary stuff almost, I would say. Like, w as a parent, w would you say, like, this maybe for not for under seven or something like that? Because there's some, there's some moments I was like, whoa, for a kid's movie, they felt kind of intense. Yeah, like, I think Nick could see it at age 10. Um, well, sure. But, um, He's seen Dunkirk. He's but I think he I think he'd be bored with this actually. I think he would he saw he ugly dolls. Earnest. He did see ugly dolls and, <laughs> and he'll he never it. forgive me. He'll <laughs> never forgive me. Um but yeah, but it's a good kind of scary. 
Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, stuff in hallways, and you know, the there is an unknown element to parts of the garden that they explore. I think it, it's a good kind of scary that we maybe don't give kids enough credit for being prepared. <sighs> I'm all for that kind of thing. I think like I think movies that 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 understand that kids can see and want to see stuff that might be a little unsettling to them. You know, it doesn't all have to be rainbow bright, you know, but I, I'm just, I'm curious. Mm-hmm. That, that I think this movie gets the balance right, but, you know, I'm an old guy with no kids, so what do I know? Yeah, no, and I, I think it also gets the balance right of like constantly making you wonder what is real and what's in her imagination. We established from the very mm. beginning that, that she is a storyteller and yes. that that's how she assuages herself. And that's how she escapes the horrors of her young reality. And so when we come upon the garden, like we, we don't know, we never know what's real and what is in her imagination. And that's okay. I kind of like the amorphous quality of that um, because what's real and what's not doesn't matter as much as the process and the catharsis that, it, that is possible for her and for all of them there. Yeah. Um, and there is a release and there is um, eventually a, a sense of peace. But again, to you, to just compare it to, um, she, to the secret, <laughs> if we may, <laughs> um, it's never mawkish. Like there are, no. are and there are answers. They are seeking answers. They're seeking some sense of peace, but it's never like in, in a maudlin or, or mawkish way. It feels truthful, and the cast is really good. Always like Colin Firth. Always like Julie Walters. You know, they they show up and they class things up. Dixie Adrix, does she look familiar to you? No, what she's, she's in the, Summerland. She's the friend in Summerland. She's the tomboyish uh... young friend. Okay, well, I'll tell you, she's amazing. Like, I uh, this is a kid. You look at her now, and you're like, I see the the Kristen Scott Thomas you're going to become in your twenties. Uh, she just has this sense of self that really, you know, uh, plays out in the film. And yeah, I think she's extraordinary. I, I, this movie is great. Like, I I love I love kids movies about grief. <laughs> that is a subgenre that I think is great. It also, uh, Dave and I recently rewatched uh, Betty Davis and Now Voyager, and I love movies about like messed up rich people who get their act together <laughs> and, and work their way through their neuroses. Uh, so, yeah. So I, Iron I just, Man. For instance, yeah, I, I, this movie I think just is firing on all cylinders. I, I would have loved to have seen it projected because it is gorgeous uh, and when it's supposed to be gorgeous and grim when it's supposed to be grim. And yeah, like the, you're, you're circling back to a, a, a book whose adaptations I've already loved. But yeah, I, this is one of my favorite films of the year. I cannot wow. recommend it. I, really, people should check it out. So see, I set the timer this time. So there's my timer okay. going off. Um, what is your number? It's I'm a giving number. it a I'm giving it a nine, and I suspect when I see it, when I watch it again, I'll probably want to give it a lot higher than that. Okay. Um, I'm saying seven point five. So, okay. So what is that? That's that's an eight point three. Eight point three. So go check yeah. out Secret Garden wherever it's streaming. Indeed, you should. Thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, Check us out here on Facebook or YouTube. You're watching on YouTube. Sorry. Uh, Like this video. Subscribe Mm -hmm. to our YouTube channel. Follow us at BeFast all day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash BeFast all day. Uh, We give our subscribers the chance once a month to pick a classic film for us to review. Uh, This month, we are looking at The Adventures of Robin Hood, starring the recently departed uh, Olivia de Havilland. So very excited to talk about that. That is an exclusive at Patreon. You got to go to patreon.com slash be fast all day to subscribe uh we will see we're taking next week off actually for various reasons so we'll be back in two weeks so until then take care of yourselves and each other and thanks for watching bye have a great week bye